principles of the lag screw and the position screw. In these exercises, you will apply a screw with a lag function and another with a position function. The instruments to be used are the brown 2.5 millimeter and the 3.5 millimeter drill bit. The 3.5 2.5 double drill sleeve. The brown 3.5 millimeter tap with T handle. The countersink. The depth gauge. And the screwdriver with holding sleeve. Exercise A. A lag screw will be placed in the bone model perpendicular to the fracture line. Be sure to choose the end of the bone that has a simulated fracture matching the one shown on the screen. The 3.5 millimeter drill bit is placed through the appropriate end of the double drill sleeve. The glide hole is drilled through the near cortex only. This hole has the same diameter as the outer diameter of the threads of the 3.5 millimeter screw. The 2.5 millimeter end of the double drill sleeve is placed through the glide hole until it engages the far cortex. The 2.5 millimeter drill bit is passed through this end of the double drill sleeve and the thread hole is created in the far cortex. Remove the double drill sleeve. Attach the countersink to the T-handle. Countersink the glide hole in a clockwise direction. Using this instrument increases the contact interface between the bone and the screw head. The depth gauge has a rod with a hooked end and a measurement bar, which is used to determine the length of the screw needed. The measurement bar is marked in two millimeter increments. The hooked rod is passed through both holes in the bone. It is tilted slightly and withdrawn until the hook engages the surface of the far cortex. The rounded end of the measuring device is pushed tightly against the near cortex and the length of the screw is determined from the measuring scale. Measurements are rounded up to the nearest two millimeter mark. The 3.5 millimeter tap is placed through the appropriate end of the double drill sleeve and passed through the glide hole until it engages the thread hole. Turning the tap cuts the thread in the thread hole. The tap should be turned until at least two or three threads have exited the far cortex. The tap is removed. A 3.5 millimeter cortex screw of appropriate length is inserted. Compression is achieved across the fracture line as the screw is tightened. Note that the long axis of the screw is perpendicular to the long axis of the fracture line. The screw is removed and the bone model rotated 90 degrees. A lag screw is inserted as before with the only exception being the orientation of the lag screw relative to the fracture line. When the lag screw is not placed perpendicular to the fracture line, shear forces develop along the fracture line. They can cause displacement of the fracture fragments, as is shown in this demonstration. Exercise B, the position screw. If the configuration of the fracture is such that the fracture fragment will collapse into the medullary canal when compression is applied, then a screw with a position function should be used. A thread hole is drilled through both the near and far cortices using the 2.5 millimeter drill bit through the appropriate end of the double drill sleeve. In the bone model, it will be necessary to support the fracture fragment while drilling. The length of the screw is determined by using the depth gauge. Note that the countersink was not used. The 3.5 millimeter tap is used to cut the threads in both the far and the near cortices.
Now the appropriate 3.5 millimeter cortex screw is inserted. The position of the near fragment is maintained by the screw and the fragment can no longer be collapsed into the medullary canal. Remove the screw. The effect of using a screw with a lag function in this type of fracture configuration will be demonstrated by creating a glide hole in the near cortex with the 3.5 millimeter drill bit. The same 3.5 millimeter screw is now reinserted. Because the threads no longer engage the near cortex, the fracture fragment collapses into the medullary canal as the screw is tightened. Exercise C an oblique screw through a tubular bone. Occasionally, an oblique screw has to be inserted through a bone with a marrow cavity. The glide hole is created with the 3.5 millimeter drill bit through the 3.5 millimeter drill guide in an oblique direction through the near cortex. The 2.5 millimeter drill guide is introduced into the glide hole in the brown 2.5 millimeter drill bit inserted. After entering the medullary cavity, the drill is advanced to the opposite cortex, where it may slide off without penetrating. If pressure is now applied, the drill bit may be bent and break, leaving the tip somewhere in the medullary cavity. The drill guide is repositioned and ideally advanced to the opposite cortex before careful drilling of the thread hole is carried out, applying minimal and steady force. Once the drill starts biting, the hole can be finished without problems. The countersink depression is created for an even force distribution of the screw head bone interface. The length of the screw needed is determined with the depth gauge. Care is taken to introduce the 3.5 millimeter tap through the 3.5 millimeter sleeve in the same direction as the drill bit. Otherwise, it may slide along the opposite cortex and be bent. Correct orientation of the tap allows effortless cutting of the threads into the thread hole. Insertion of the appropriate screw. Too flat an angle will change the direction of the screw as the tip is advanced. Such a screw cannot be tightened and may be bent. The screw then would have to be redirected, inserted and solidly tightened. Please remove the screw.